Wow. All right. Well, here we go. Gulf of Oman attack. U.S. says Iran. Highly likely behind torpedo attack on American-linked oil tanker and bombing of second ship. Yay! Isn't this great? Tanker torpedo attacks in Hormuz. Cruise abandoned ship, U.S. Navy assist video, Middle East on alert, oil prices surge. Iran has little to gain from attacks. Ain't that the truth? America warned would lose war. Don't matter. We still achieve our objectives. We won't lose the war in terms of Iran taking over the United States. How is it that people can still believe the U.S., the Israeli government, how is it that people could still believe all of this horse shit? Federal spending soars past three trillion. All right, I am I am really tired of it. Sixty years, all I have seen is violence, killing, murder, bombing, taking over countries, occupations stealing minerals, oil, all based on a lie. Never stops. Why doesn't it stop? It doesn't stop because, well, the U.S. and Israel, with their false flag attacks, they're tied to the hip, one in the same. I Look, you know, Israel... United States government couldn't be more evil. And what what is that? Um, the uh, access of evil. The access of evil. Well, the guy that said that, Bush, baby Bush, was just doing that narcissistic, psychopathic thing, you know, pointing the finger at others, you know, because they can't take responsibility for their own evil within themselves, so they point the finger at someone else, but it's all about an agenda, all about an agenda. We are the axis of you, Israel. U.S. Then the other point in that axis, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Britain, Tanker Inferno. Is this the start? It could very well be the start of that World War III that has actually been going on. But now it gets really dramatic and explosive and U.S. says Iran highly likely behind torpedo attack on American linked oil tanker and bombing of second ship. We've already been set up for this. Report Mossad intel of looming Iranian attack led U.S. to send in carrier force deploying the U.S. S. Abraham Lincoln to vicinity of Iran. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton says it came after a number of troubling and and uh, escalatory, escalatory indications and warnings. Escalations. Let's just say escalations. Yes. Iran. Country that hasn't threatened anyone Hundreds of years. Never invaded another country. Hundreds of years. But, ah, look at what Israel and the United States has done. Invading so many countries, dropping bombs all over the place. But, no, it's Iran. Or it's Iraq. 
Oh, right, Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. Who cares? Who cares? Shock and awe. Shock and awe, 24-7. Americans watching the bombing of a country that had no, no, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing to do with 9-11. Nothing to, oh, who had something to do with 9-11? Well, Israel. Saudi Arabia. Oh, and the U.S. government. That's right. Take down my video, YouTube. Dare I say that the official narrative on 9-11 was incorrect. Here, yeah, Bolton said just before this attack, this torpedo attack, Iran, yeah, Oh my god. The the deployment is aimed at sending a clear and unmistakable message to the Iranian regime that any attack on United States interests or on those of our allies will be met with unrelenting force. Yes. These sick, evil bastards. One, two, and then throw in Netanyahu. The United States is not seeking war with the Iranian regime. We've always been seeking war with the Iranian regime. But believe that, Americans. Believe it. Believe the horseshit your authority figures tell you. Believe the lies they speak all the time. Go ahead. Believe another lie. And Trump, of course, yeah. He blames Iran. Immediately, no investigation. Geez, do you think maybe there's an agenda here? You know, I am sick of this. And you know, with every event that takes place, there are more and more innocent people who have to suffer the consequences of these sick, evil bastards who never get a scratch on them. Now, Israel and the United States work hand in hand. Israel is known for its false flags as well as the U.S. Baby boomers just think Vietnam, the Gulf of Tonkin. Tonkin. Yep. Iraq. Let's blame Iraq for 9-11. We went into Afghanistan, we went into Iraq, and Saudi Arabia and Israel is where we should have been going into. But, well, Iraq had a lot of oil. Afghanistan has a lot of heroin and minerals. But the Israelis, now they are capable of just what the United States is capable of. These are good articles. This was just posted June 9, 2019, just a few days ago. Israel's attack on the USS Liberty. It took place on June 8. June 8. Uh, what was the year? 1967. It is one of the greatest lies that most Americans, in fact most people around the world, have never heard of, and it reveals much about the true relationship between the United States and one of its closest allies, the State of Israel. Fifty years ago, Israel launched a shocking and brutal attack on an American intelligence ship, the USS Liberty, as it cruised in international water, waters near the Sinai Peninsula and the coast of Gaza. The governments of the two countries, as well as the mainstream media, have maintained a grotesque and transparent cover-up in support of the lie 
that the incident was a sim uh, was simply a tragic accident, a case of mistaken identity, but the survivors know this was no accident. The Israeli military did all it could to sink the Liberty and kill all 294 on board. Didn't succeed, but at the end of the attack, 34 crew members were dead. Between 171 and 174 were injured, depending on which source you use. The ship had been positively identified by Israeli planes as an American ship as early as 6 a.m. That day, eight hours before the attack, the Liberty flew a large American flag. It had clear identity, clearly identified as an American non-combat ship. And it took place on the fourth day of Israel's six-day war against Egypt, Jordan, Syria. The Liberty had been ordered into the Mediterranean to monitor communications related to this Arab-Israeli conflict. The ship was hit with rockets, cannon fire, and even napalm. Eight sailors were killed. In the initial assault, the Liberty was unable to contact the 6th Fleet for help because its emergency frequency had been jammed and communication Equipment badly damaged, destroyed, temporary repairs on the ship, or at least um, they were at least able to send a distress signal uh, to aircraft carriers or sent the USS Saratoga, the USS America. Planes were immediately dispatched to aid the Liberty. The pilots were authorized at the time to destroy the attacking planes and ships, but before they could arrive, new orders were given recalling them, even though the attack was still ongoing. 35 minutes into the attack, three Israeli ships reached the scene and began launching torpedoes. One hit the Liberty, killing another 26 crewmen and creating a 40-foot hole in the hull. Then a spray of machine gun fire targeted firefighters and rescue workers who were carrying stretchers with the wounded. The Israeli boats even fired upon life rafts, which had been lowered. 2005, the U.S. Liberty Veterans Association Center report entitled, A Report, War Crimes Committed Against U.S. Military Personnel, June 8, 1967. This is what the report said shortly after the Sixth Fleet transmission of the rules of engagement in its dispatched rescue aircraft. To its dispatched rescue aircraft, the Israeli torpedo boats suddenly broke off their attack and transmitted messages asking if USS Liberty required assistance. At the same time, an Israeli naval officer notified the U.S. Naval attaché at the American Embassy in Tel Aviv that Israeli forces had mistakenly attacked a United States Navy ship and apologized. The Naval attaché notified the United States Sixth Fleet and the rescue aircraft were recalled before they arrived at the scene of the attack. Researcher Allison Ware who has written extensively about the history of Palestine and Israel, wrote an article on the website, If Americans Knew, about the media silence. She wrote, Whatever the reason, until American news media start being conscientious enough to get their reports on Israel right, Americans are going to continue being dis disastrously misinformed about one of the globe's most destabilizing tragic and potentially calamitous, calamitous areas of conflict. Americans know they're being lied to. Jews know they're being lied to. Israelis know they're being lied to. But the lie is easier for those who are comfortable. Sorry, but it's the truth. 
How many have I faced trying to tell them the truth? And they refuse. They don't want to hear it. Because it might mean that they have to do something with that truth. It might mean, oh, they have to change. They, oh, I might have to do a little bit of research myself to find out the truth. Now I'm going to go with the lie because that allows me to continue living my comfortable life, doing everything just exactly the same as I did yesterday, and I'll do the same tomorrow, but I'm comfortable. Hey, I'll slap a, uh, a, a ribbon, yeah, a ribbon, uh, a magnetic ribbon on my car saying, I support my troops going after, going after Iran. That's what we'll do. I support my troops. Sorry, guys. I am same old, same old. And same old, same old is really sickening, disgusting, grotesque. So it's beyond immoral. I mean, even just the word immoral is an understatement. There is no word to describe these people. But what, what, how do you describe the Israelis and the Americans who accept the lies their government tells them all? I mean, it's a, it's a farce. It's a joke. It's a, I'm sick of it. An article on Washington's blog, February 2015, sums up the evidence that the Israelis knew full well that they were attacking an American ship. Recently dis declassified radio transcripts between the Israeli attack forces and ground control show that at least three times an Israeli fighter jet pilot identified the craft as American and asked whether ground control was sure he should attack. Ground control repeatedly said, yes, attack the vessel. Ground control to Major Tom. The aim Israel wanted to make it look like Egypt was responsible for the attack, potentially bringing the U.S. into the war, but severing the relations between Egypt and the United States. The documents also suggest here, this was in the Baltimore Sun 2007, an article in which detailed uh, that the Israelis knew it was an American ship, but the article also said the documents also suggest that the U.S. government anxious to spare Israel's reputation and preserve its alliance with the U.S. closed the case with what even some of its participants now say was a hasty and seriously flawed investigation just like the assassination of Kennedy, 9-11 commission. We get these bullshit reports from these commissions and we accept it over and over and over again. So, a deliberate act of murder? Absolutely. War crimes? Absolutely. Here, commission's most explosive findings. Oh, you could read. Read all about it. Read all about it. What have we learned? We have learned that Israel is capable of attacking its allies, and especially the United States, to further its Zionist agenda. One can't help but think about 9-11 in this regard. Israel will lie to America to draw it into a war under false pretenses. pretenses. It also has no problem blaming a third party like Egypt for an atrocity it did not commit. Israel wields sufficient power with, within American circles of power that the U.S. government is more concerned about not embarrassing Israel than it is about defending its own people. The American media will participate in a cover-up of an active war against America rather than point the finger at Israel. Israel 
uses the same attacks against the liberty survivors that governments and mainstream media use to marginalize conspiracy theorists. Yes, take my video down, YouTube. Terminate my channel. I'm anti-Semitic. I am criticizing Israel, and that's anti-Semitism. Jews, you need to speak out. You really need to speak out on this. You can't be silent. You know, here in the great United States, our freedom. Oh, we have that First Amendment that allows us to speak freely. And Israel is silencing us. Israel, with all of the legislation that states are passing, and the federal government is passing all of that legislation, intended to shut up those who speak the truth. Oh, it's not anti-Semitism to speak the truth. It's, uh, that's the card played over and over. It's like that race card played over and over again. So is that anti-Semitic Semitic card played over and over again. And it's all used, all used to strip all of us of our freedom, our right to speak, whatever opinion we have, but certainly the truth, Israel silencing the truth here in the great U.S. Some Jews are speaking out, but oh boy, do they get silenced as well. Yeah. Israel will also play the anti-Semitic and neo-Nazi cards against American servicemen, servicemen who were victimized in the attack and who are continuing to demand accountability. Yes, the survivors want accountability. You know, People want to be vindicated, especially when they are survivors of evil. They, they need the vindication. They should not be shut up and then re-victimized. Re um, with attacks that discredit, ruin their reputation, question their veracity. This is a very sick world we are living in. Even half a century later, the American government will continue to protect this lie and allow the victimization of the survivors to continue. Israel cultivates the image of a country and a people who are victims, constantly under threat. But one thing that is horrifying me, that this horrifying event really makes clear, is that Israel threatens anyone or any country, even supposed friends, that get in the way of its political objectives and the United States filled with Christians not a Jewish state does the exact same thing. Does the exact same thing. You can read this article. Um, <clears throat> Israel's use of false flags and global terrorism. Michael Collins Piper, those who believe that Israel is behind the alleged chemical weapons attack in Syria, hiding behind a false flag designed to implicate the Syrian government, have very good reason to believe in such a scenario. His book, Final Judgment, documents the role of Israel's Mossad in the assassination of John F. Kennedy, first pointed out as far back as 1994. Michael first pointed out the use of false flags by Israel's Mossad to cover up its role in worldwide assassination conspiracies and other criminal activity had been 
utilized time and again. Arabs, radical Muslims, the mafia, right-wing extremists, and even environmentalists, among others, have repeatedly taken the fall for crimes committed by the Mossad or carried out under its coordination, Mossad CIA. Sick, sick agencies committing crimes. Look, United States, Israel, criminal governments. The, the criminals have taken over. They have been at the helm for decades, committing crimes against their own people and against the world. Why am I frustrated? Because it's only the people that can stop. Only the people who will finally engage in truth. In truth. Levon Affair, 1954, series of bombings in Cairo, Alexandria, Egypt. Among the targets were the libraries of the United States Information Service in both cities. In fact, the bombings were an operation by Israel, Israeli military intelligence, who helped both Egyptian President Nasser, 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 Jesus, sorry, and the outside world would believe the attacks were carried out by militant Egyptian Muslim fundamentalists. The ultimate purpose was to destabilize Nasser's relationship with both the U.S. and Britain and compel the British to withdrawal from their bases on the Suez Canal to break the West's confidence in the existing Egyptian regime to prevent economic and military aid from the West to Egypt. Okay, more false flags. You can read about it. Read all about it. Just continue reading all about it. For your life, read all about it. And then we'll read about the latest. Torpedo attack. Blame Iran. Before any investigation. That's our president. Our impulsive, psychopathic president. One of many. Hey, let's bomb Syria. No investigation. And I will just say Assad used chemical weapons against his own. Let's bomb. And that's what Trump did. No investigation. And all of the investigations on all of the chemical attacks that we have blamed Assad for, all of the investigations have shown uh, it's those rebels, not Assad. Those rebels supported and funded and trained by the CIA. But who cares about the truth? Who gives a shit about the truth? I like the lies. I like the lies. I like the lies because, well, I get a lot of benefits from just believing all of the lies told to me. One benefit is I can keep up my YouTube channel. Another benefit is I never have to change and do that hard work, you know, of research. I can just watch my TV programs. I can continue doing exactly the same thing over and over and over again, living dead. This could be the start, guys. This could be the start. <sighs> Sorry. I honestly don't know. I am so sick of this world. I am so sick of having to live at the expense of liars. Sick, psychopathic liars.
Yep. I'd say Israel, United States, false flag, and this guy is now smiling. Yay! Now we can directly attack Iran. And you know what's coming, Americans? I have no doubt that your peaceful existence here will be shattered. Oh, we've lived a very long time never having to suffer the consequences directly of our invasion of other countries. Never. No bombs dropping here. Well, not actual bombs. We've got that unconventional war going on here, whether used as a weapon. But don't think you're going to escape the direct effects of conventional war. Karma. Think about it. The good get destroyed, the evil prosper. What a world.